Let me begin by reading two verses, one from the Old Testament, one from the New. Isaiah 50 verse 4 says, The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him who is weary. And then 2 Timothy 4 2, Preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. So here we have two ideas. We need to be ready to speak to people in season. In other words, to understand the climate, the environment in which they live. There are times when people are extra sensitive to receiving the word of God. It may be at a funeral. It may be when they've just heard they have cancer. It may be family troubles. It may be financial reverses. Whatever the case is, We need to learn from the Lord how to speak to people in season. However, Paul also says we need to preach the word in season and out of season. We don't wait around until the right season arrives, even if there's no expectation of fruit. There are times when we need to share the gospel. Someone who's dying and they seem resistant to the gospel, we have to do it anyway because in season and out of season, the word of God needs to be preached. Well, let me tell you a little story. I was down at Cruise in the Coast, this huge collection of classic cars, and I have a car that I use as a missionary to speak to people down there about the Lord. And as we were standing by the car, suddenly we saw that a crowd had gathered and was following one vehicle through the shopping mall where we were, and everybody was running along trying to get a picture. And finally, through the crowd, I was able to see what it was. Someone had taken two little Ford Rangers, two small pickup trucks, and cut the beds off them and had then welded the two fronts together back to back so that either way they were driving down the road, it looked like it was uh, front ends on both ends. And then this person had painted onto the side of this vehicle, Jesus, one way. Well, I ran over and I said to him, say, where are you going to park? And he said, over by the Wendy's restaurant. I said, okay, I'll come and see you. So I made my way, after we got a bit of a break, I made my way over to see this fellow. And his name was Ray, and he owned a used car company in Raceland, Louisiana. And his business card says, Jesus is number one. (laughs) Normally people say, well, you know, the customer is number one. He said, no, in our business, Jesus is number one. So as I spoke with him, he actually had a motorhome there too, and there was a group of them. They were handing out these million-dollar bills with the gospel on them. And as I spoke with him, he told me that he knew exactly what people were going to say when he got out of that vehicle. They would say to him, well, it looks like you don't know which way you're going. (laughs) And he would say, well, up until such and such a date, I didn't know where I was going, but now I do. And he was able to share the gospel. Well, here's what happened with this man, Ray. He was interested in becoming a millionaire by the time he was 30. And uh, he heard about this motivational speaker, Zig Ziglar, Zig Ziglar salesman, who I think he was born in Louisiana, but he lived his young life in Mississippi, married a girl from Jackson, and he had dropped out of college, and he had become a door-to-door salesman of pots and pans. He moved his way up until he was the general manager of the company. Now, he began giving motivational talks to salesmen, He had been raised in a religious home. He attended church every week, but he had never put his trust in the Lord. And then when he was 45 years old, an old black lady came to him and he said, she walked into our house one weekend talking about faith and my lack of it, Ziegler said. 
She said, God's been waiting for you for a long time. And that weekend, he put his trust in the Lord. So at these conventions, when people would come just to learn, because he was such a, a highly motivational sort of a guy, they would come to hear him speak. And he handed out to anyone interested a little audio tape of his testimony. And so Ray had gone there with the hope of being highly motivated because he wanted to make all this money. But as he drove home in his car, he was listening to this and he had been so impressed with Zig Ziglar and the special quality about him that kind of surprised him. And as he's listening, Zig Ziglar tells how he was converted. And he says, if you've never put your trust in the Lord Jesus, you need to pull your car off to the side of the road and do it now. And Ray did it and put his trust in the Lord. And when he got home, all he could talk about was Jesus. His wife said, you went to that conference to become a millionaire and you came home a preacher. And his friend said he was crazy. And he said, yeah, I am. I, I used to be crazy about cars and women and money. And now he, he said, I'm crazy about Jesus. And what a wonderful thing to spend time with that dear man whose heart was just so full of love for the Lord Jesus, his desire to share with others. And, and so here are these two ideas that here was a man who was ready to hear the word of God. He was impressed with Zig Ziglar. He knew there was something missing in his life. He saw whatever that was that he was missing in the life of Zig Ziglar. And Zig spoke to him a word in season to him who is weary. But there he was at this huge gathering of aficionados of classic cars. And what was he going to be doing? He was ready in season and out of season for people who had no interest in spiritual things to put the word of God into their hearts just the same. So both of these are true. We need to have the tongue of the learned to know how to speak a word in season to those who are weary, to those who are softened by the circumstances of life, those who are receptive to hear the word of God. But we also need to preach the word and be ready in season and out of season. So God help us to understand the difference, to know that there's general seed distribution and then there are very specific opportunities in which we share the gospel. I often think of Ray and pray for him and his testimony there. Uh, Zig Ziglar's now in heaven, but left a tremendous impression. And you can look up some of his videos on YouTube, but, but listen to his testimony, a clear gospel testimony of how the Lord saved him and saved his marriage as a result. The Lord bless you and may you be ready to give a word in season to those who are weary, but also to preach the word in season and out of season.